Hi there. Today we are going to be reading and highlighting Lesson 1 of Unit 3, Earth and Human Activity. I'm going to be annotating with Cami. You can follow along in your online version of the student reader, or you can follow along in your physical student reader. And we will look at page 4 to begin with Lesson 1. Lesson 1, Water on Earth the Ogala Aquifier. Underneath eight states in the western United States is a massive system of groundwater. It holds so much fresh water that if all of its water were pumped out, it would cover all 50 states with one with 0 0.5 meters or 1.5 feet of water. Groundwater is the supply of fresh water beneath Earth's surface in the pores of soil, sand, and rock. This groundwater system is called the Ogala Aquifier or High Plains Aquifier. An aquifier is the underground layer of rock, sand, or soil that holds groundwater. The Ogala Aquifier is the largest aquifier in North America. Filtration. Groundwater isn't an underground river. Instead, it is water that fills the spaces between soil particles and rock. Because of this, it is some of the cleanest water on Earth. That is because the particles of rock that make up aquifers act as natural filters as water moves through the layers of materials. Picture a coffee pot, an old school coffee pot. Hot water is poured into the pot where it mixes with coffee grounds. A coffee filter then traps coffee grounds and allows the liquid coffee to flow through. Coffee filters work because they have pores that are large enough for water to travel through, but small enough that coffee grounds cannot. Keurig cups, K-cups, they work in a similar way, but the filters here that you see in this picture work a lot better for keeping the grounds in the filter and the coffee liquid out. Aquifiers work in the same way as coffee filters. As gravity pulls water from Earth's surface underground, the water is filtered, becoming purer. Some aquifers have cleaner water because, than other aquifers because they are better able to filter out contaminants as water moves through them. Earth Systems Groundwater is the result of two interacting Earth systems. A system is a set of connected, interacting parts that form a more complex whole. Scientists study Earth's systems to understand how the different parts interact with and influence one another. The hydrosphere is the system made up of all the water found on Earth. The geosphere is made up of all of Earth's landforms, including rocks and soil. As water shapes over, moves over Earth's surface, it shapes the geosphere. It does this by weathering and eroding the rocks and soil it passes over. The hydrosphere is also affected by the geosphere because not all rocks store water. The processes that shape and reform rocks is the rock cycle. Or reform rocks in the rock cycle determine how likely a rock is to store water. And actually, before we move on, I want you to make sure you put a little star next to this diagram. You have the atmosphere, which is your air, the biosphere, all living things, hydrosphere, all the water, and geosphere, all the uh, ground, rocks, and minerals on Earth. How does water get underground? Rocks that are both porous and permeable are most likely to hold water. Porosity refers to the number of spaces between particles in a substance. It determines how much water a material can hold. Permeability refers to the ease with which substances, such as water, move through a material. It determines whether water can move through the material. Some of the water in the Ogala Aquifier has been stored there for millions of years. It got there when water on Earth's surface seeped into the ground. Amounts of water on Earth The Ogala Aquifier is one place where fresh water is stored on Earth. Almost 75% of the planet is covered in water. Most of this water is found in oceans as salt water. 
only a small amount is found on Earth is fresh water. Most fresh water is stored in frozen glaciers or underground in aquifers. Some fresh water is found in rivers and lakes. There is a set amount of water on Earth. Just like all matter, water is never created or destroyed. Instead, it moves from one form to another. And don't forget to put a star next to this diagram, which shows us the groundwater, ice caps, glaciers, and lakes and rivers, where the water can be found that's fresh, as well as the salt water. The water cycle. With enough heat from the sun, liquid water on Earth's surface evaporates into the atmosphere. Evaporation is the process of liquid water changing into water vapor, its gas state. As the water vapor moves higher into the atmosphere, it loses heat. Eventually, it will condense. When it condenses, it changes from a gas back into a liquid. Precipitation is water falling back to Earth's surface in the form of rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Gravity's downward pull causes precipitation to fall back to the surface. Some water that doesn't immediately evaporate back into the atmosphere will collect into lakes, pools, and other water sources. Some water that falls to Earth's surface will flow downhill because of gravity. Any area of land where all the water that falls in it drains into a common outlet is called a watershed. Still more water is used by the biosphere because all living things need water to survive. Plants absorb precipitation through their roots. They release water back to the atmosphere through their leaves as water vapor. The process by which water moves through plants uh, from roots to their leaves is called transpiration. If the plant's roots are deep enough, it can also access groundwater. The circulation of water through the hydrosphere from Earth's surface to the atmosphere and back is called the water cycle. The water cycle is complex. Its processes vary around the planet. For example, very deep groundwater can take more than a million years to complete the water cycle and return to the ocean. In contrast, in hot climates and seasons, precipitation sometimes evaporates just seconds after it falls to Earth's surface. Water and weather. As water moves around the planet through the water cycle, it is not distributed evenly. Some regions around the planet receive a lot of rainfall throughout the year. Other regions receive very little rainfall. The amount of precipitation is one part of weather. Weather refers to the conditions of the atmosphere in a particular place at a particular time. Weather conditions include temperature, humidity, wind speed, air pressure, and precipitation. Climate is the average weather over a span of 30 years. In other words, weather changes hour to hour, while climate changes over very long periods of time. The high plains, where the Ogala Aquifier is located, have a semi-arid climate. This means they receive very little rain throughout the year, less than 50 centimeters of rain per year. The high plains region is also known for strong winds and extreme temperature changes. The temperature can change by negative one degree Celsius from day to night. Nebraska is one state in the high plains. It sits over the deepest part of the Ogala Aquifier. Its capital is Lincoln. In the winter, Lincoln's temperature can reach negative 10 degrees Celsius, or 13 degrees Fahrenheit. In the summer, it can reach 32 degrees Celsius, 89 degrees Fahrenheit. The most common forms of precipitation in Lincoln are rain in the summer and light snow in the winter. Winter and summer are two seasons. A season is a time of year that has a specific weather pattern and amount of daylight. Each season has similar patterns of weather in specific locations. Farming with groundwater. Because the high plains do not receive a lot of rain, they are not naturally fertile places for plants. However, the water in the Ogala Aquifier has turned the high plains region from dry, wind-swept plains to one of the country's most fertile regions. Despite the lack of rain, the High Plains region is called America's breadbasket. This is because it grows so many crops that feed the rest of the country. These crops include corn, sorghum, soybeans, wheat, and cotton. All of these crops need water to grow. Because there is little rain, farmers depend on water from the Ogala Aquifier. 
people who live nearby also use the groundwater for drinking. When too much groundwater is removed from an aquifer, it can upset the natural balance of the water cycle. Aquifers are naturally balanced with the amount of water being added to the aquifer from precipitation is roughly the same as the amount of water leaving the aquifer. The majority of the water in the Algala aquifer has been there for millions of years. However, the Algala aquifer is currently being removed faster than it's being added. This worries many people because it is the most important source of fresh water in this region. And that is the end of lesson one. Make sure you've finished highlighting and move on to the next video.